In continuum mechanics, there are two integral theorems that come up repeatedly, and so I'd like to go over those. There's some other ones that we use occasionally, but there, there are two major ones that come up uh, quite often, and, and they're important to understand. Uh, the first one is something known as the localization theorem, and the statement reads as follows. Let f of x be a continuous uh, function in, over a body b, and if the integral of f, f over a subset of b, actually any subset of b, is equal to zero, then that function must be equal to zero. So the important thing here really is that the function be continuous, and that the integral over any domain d, being a subset of the body over which f is being defined, if that integral is equal to zero, then the function must be equal to zero. It may not seem very obvious at the moment why this is an important theorem, but we'll see this later on. It's used to drive essentially all the balance laws that we use in continuum mechanics. Uh, and just sort of pictures, what we have is we have a body B, and if I look at any subset of B and I do the inter take the integral of F over that subset, and if I get zero, and then if I do the same operation again for another domain or subset D, and I get zero, and if I keep doing that, do the integral over yet another subset of B and I get zero, and if I keep doing that over all possible subsets of B and I always get zero, that means that the function is zero. So if my integral over any D subset of B, so it's any, is it's, if it's always equal to zero, then my conclusion is that the function is equal to zero. So it's kind of a peculiar theorem, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Best to draw some pictures, say, in one dimension. So you have an interval you're taking over which a function is defined, and now you start taking integrals over subsets, let's say d, and if I'm always getting zero, there's basically two choices. I can have a function that comes across like that and adds and subtracts, or the function's equal to zero. Those two cases would give me an integral over d that's equal to zero. But if I split the interval into two bits, like this, then you'll see I won't get zero. So a function that slices through going plus and minus isn't going to satisfy the hypothesis of the theorem. So in that case, the f is not going to be equal to zero. But if I'm always getting zero, no matter what subset d I pick, that means that the function is basically going to be zero. So this is an important theorem that comes up. And we'll, we'll see its use later as we get further into the subject area. Uh, the other important theorem that comes up is something known as the divergence theorem. So here we, ha we have a body uh, B again, and it has a surface, partial B, so that's the notation that we use to denote the surface of a body. And there's also a unit normal, outward normal field. So n is the outward normal field. And the divergence theorem is a theorem that allows you to transfer integrals over the surface to integrals over the volume. And this is also important in a lot of derivational steps. So, and there are a number of forms of this, so I, let me just go ahead and write these out. So the first one is if I have a scalar function f, and I multiply that by the normal field n, and I integrate over the surface, so the integral f n dA, so dA is the the integration area on the surface, that will, you can convert that to an integral over the body B of the gradient of F. And so that's just a conversion. So we convert from an integral over the surface to an integral over the body. And so that's for a scalar case. So, so F here, F is a scalar. Um, and if I want to write this in indices, it's fni dA is equal to f comma i dB. So I've used the common notation uh, to represent the components of the gradient of f. If I have a vector field v, it's the 
I can write it as follows. That if I have the integral over the surface of v dot n dA, that then becomes the integral of the divergence of v over the body b. And initially, v i n i is v dot n, and the divergence is v i comma i. And we can also do this with tensor fields. So if I have a tensor field T, I can have an integral or surface of Tn dA, and that converts to the divergence of T integrated over the volume B. Uh, initially, it's Tijnj, so T is acting on the normal vector n, and that integral becomes Tij comma j. So those are the components of the divergence there. So these are component expressions on the right and in the middle we have the symbolic expressions. So all of these relationships are uh, various versions of a general form. So the general case here I can write as an integral over the surface of a tensor of any order, so t, i, j, k, whatever it happens to be, times n, r. So n again is the unit outward normal. Becomes an integral over the body of whatever I had there comma, so that means partial differentiation, and the index that you put after the comma matches the index from the unit normal. So that's the uh, general form or general case for the divergence theorem. And it basically just allows us to take surface information and transfer it to information over the body. And we actually use this theorem together with the localization theorem. So in the laboratory, you usually measure things on the surface. So you know the left-hand side here. And what we do is we transfer it to an integral over the body uh, using the, the divergence theorem. And then using uh, other observations, we will then use the localization theorem on the part on the right-hand side, and we'll be able to derive balance laws for things like energy, momentum, angular momentum, entropy production, things like that in a body.